Hi, I'm Brian Van. And I'm Aubrey. Today we're going to show you how to replace brake pads the right way. Well, kind of the right way. All right. What kind of bike do you have, Aubrey? Oh, nine R6. How many miles do you have on it? About 10,000. Okay. Aubrey rides primarily on the racetrack with our friends from Sport Bike Track Time. And you're in which group now? Intermediate. And if I remember right, you're looking to move up this year, too. Hopefully to advance. Nice. And smoke your husband. Yes. That just got said. We never okay. been in. That's pretty sweet. I have lots of good attitude to have. So what we're going to do today is, given the group that she's riding in right now, okay, the motorcycle she has, we're going to install CL, which is Carbon Lorraine, formerly Carbon Lorraine, XBK5 brake pads on the front, and we're going to do the RX3 brake pads on the rear. This is really the only compound available for the rear, okay? It's all that you need back there. For the front, the XBK5 is, is kind of a super sport pad. It's going to be good for street riding, okay? And it's going to be good for racetrack duty, too. And you need to kind of gauge this depending on what group you're riding in. If you were more in the advanced group towards the front of the advanced group, I'd put you in some race pads from, from CL or from Vezra or something like that. But this pad should serve you very well on this motorcycle. They work without a whole lot of heat, so when you go out there right away, they're going to be good and effective, right? And they last a long time. Good, linear feel. Okay, so okay. It's, the initial bite's not so crazy, it upsets the chassis of the bike. Okay. And that's important. When we change the brake pads, okay, we're going to show you the, the proper procedure. And I'm going to qualify this whole thing and say that th this is how we service our motorcycles here. Okay, in no way, shape, or form does this supersede what you will find in your owner's manual. If you do not feel comfortable servicing your own motorcycle, please take it to a licensed, qualified technician. Okay, this isn't necessarily a how-to video. I've got to love legalese. This is us showing you what we do when we work on our own bikes. When we replace the brake pads, okay, we're going to flush out the brake system, put some new Motul RBF 600 in there, right? We're going to put three speed bleeders in. It's going to help us to change the brake fluid quickly. The things that we need to do this job are, obviously, brake pads, front and rear. We're going to use a speed bleeder recovery bag and hose. It makes the whole brake bleeding thing no mess, right? We need brake fluid. We need brake cleaner. We've got our speed bleeders. I like to keep handy a roll of paper towel, and some Windex or just, just some you know water-based type solvent. If you get a little brake fluid on your body work, your painted stuff, you're going to want to hurry up, spray it off, wipe it off so it doesn't have time to damage the paint. For tools on the R6, what I have pulled, I've got a toothbrush we're going to use to scrub the caliper pistons. Key, okay? I've got a couple of screwdrivers here, a big flat blade, I've got a smaller Phillips, a medium flat blade, some needle nose pliers, side cutters, 8 millimeter wrench, 3 8 ratchet and a 12 millimeter socket and that'll be enough to do this whole job. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the caliper and then we're going to pull the brake pad retaining pin and the brake pad retainer clip, right? Slide the pads out and then we're going to scrub the caliper pistons. If you just want to zoom in there real quick, Jeff, and show they've done a nice clean safety wire job on this. Even though she's not racing yet, she's still decided to do this, and we applaud this absolutely because brakes are a critical safety item, especially the front brakes, and this is just a great check and balance to make sure you have everything tight. Okay, we're just finishing removing the bolts from the caliper. All right, two bolts cut the safety wire using my 3 8 ratchet there. We're now going to slide the caliper off the bike. In order to get this brake pad retaining pin and the retaining clip for the brake pads out, what we need to do is we need to grab a hold of these clips, these cotter pins right here, just pull them right out. Even those pliers work great for that. Once you've done that, kind of use the tip of the pliers, push in on that just a little bit, grab that like so with the pliers, just kind of work it out. There's going to be a little bit of pressure on that spring clip like you just saw, and it's going to shoot right out. She still has the stock pads in the bike. She's got about 10,000 miles on them. Even though they don't look completely worn out, they don't perform as well as they should because they've went through several heat cycles. Okay, The new brake pads are going to outperform these tremendously. Stock brake pads are really pretty good, but when you've got 10,000 miles on them, all those heat cycles, it's just like a tire. It really affects its performance. One of the most key things we're going to do here is I want you to kind of zoom in and look at all the brake dust on those caliper pistons. 
What you do not want to do is just force these pistons back. There's two reasons for that. Reason number one is any of this debris that's kind of stuck to the caliper piston right now can be pushed past the dust, dust seal and wind up in between the square cut seal and the dust seal. That can damage the caliper. Okay? You don't want to have any issues with your brakes moving forward. The other thing is brake fluid is a material that's hydroscopic. It can attract, retain moisture, and like any other oil, it kind of wears out. Okay? And you'll have a little bit of debris actually inside the oil, okay? some floaties. If you just push this back, when the system is closed, all that garbage, fluid, and debris is going to be forced up into your master cylinder. Okay, and the last thing you want to have an issue with on your motorcycle when you're riding it is going to be the front brake system, master cylinder and or caliper. So what we're going to do right now is using a toothbrush and some brake cleaner, okay, we're going to clean all this debris off these caliper pistons. Once we've done that, we're going to hook up this brake fluid bag. To the, to the bleeder, open the bleeder, and then push the caliper pistons back, which will force the old fluid into the bag and not up into the master cylinder. Grab a dustpan. That's going to spray off a lot of the real easy to clean loose stuff, right? And then just kind of get in there while it's still wet. Agitate around a little bit. And you want to get these as clean as possible. Like I said, you don't want to force anything back in beyond those seals. Okay, caliper pistons, if you want to go ahead and zoom in, they are clean. That whole caliper is really clean, so now we're ready to push the pistons back. What I'm going to do is I've got my, my speed bleeder brake fluid recovery bag hooked up, right? I'm going to go ahead and open the bleeder screw, like so, and now these pistons will literally push back with hardly any effort whatsoever, okay? And this is the best way to do it. I'm using nothing but just my hands to get these all the way back in the bore, okay? Like so, all four push back, tighten the screw, that's that. We are now ready to put this back on the motorcycle and I'll show you how to put the pads in. Okay, now what I've done is I've put the caliper back on the motorcycle, the bolts are just finger tight, okay? And that's going to make sense as we move on. I'm going to take the brake pads now, obviously make sure the friction side, okay, is towards the rotor. You do not want to go putting these things in backwards, and yes, it can absolutely happen. Go ahead and slide those in, like so. We're going to reuse our brake pad retaining clip. There's really no need to replace that. These things typically last the life of the motorcycle without any issue. When you slide your pin in, try to keep the cotter pin holes facing upwards so you can get to them nice and easy. Okay, Get the first one started. You're going to get up against that retaining clip. Push down on the retaining clip so you can get the pin to go past it. I'm going to take and reinstall these cotter pins. These are key. They absolutely have to be in there. And if you kept those holes facing upward, like I suggested, you're going to be able to find those really, really easy. Okay? They go just the opposite side of the brake pad backing material. This is one of the steps you really want to take your time with. You want to make sure this is right. Those are seated properly. Okay, what I do then is I just kind of rotate them out of the way so they're not facing up. And there you go. The brake pads are now installed. We're going to leave the bolts on the caliper loose. Like I said, that's going to make sense as we continue on. We're going to do the other side off camera. There's really no need to show you that because it's an identical process. I'm going to go ahead and pump this up. And I'm going to hold the brake lever while I snug up the caliper bolts on both sides, okay? If you can't get around the bike by yourself and hold the brake lever, then just have somebody help you out. It's really not too difficult to do this. And what this is going to do, this is going to ensure that we have as little drag as possible, okay? And that drag will actually be reduced even a little more once she rides these and gets the pads broken in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and check the front brake fluid now. We're going to use the sp speed bleeders that we've put in to go ahead and change the brake fluid. You can see the fluid level is low, right? We still have not gotten to the point where we were forcing a bunch of air into the system. There's just enough fluid to pump these pistons in the front and rear back up. You can see the bladder is fully extended now. I'm going to go ahead and compress that. We're going to use Motul RBF 600 fluid. 
going to get this topped off like so. And now we're going to show you how these speed bleeders work. These things are super cash, very, very easy to use. Okay. Use the speed bleeder bag. It turns bleeding brakes and flushing a system into a very simple one-man operation. Okay. Essentially what we have here is inside this bleeder screw now there is a one-way check valve that will not allow air to enter the system. So all we have to do is just compress the lever and keep our eyes on the fluid level in the master cylinder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through each caliper about one full reservoir of fluid. And I'll stop right there so we don't ingest any air into the system. Okay? Need to refill the brake fluid and then we're going to go to the other side. Okay, I've got the fluid topped off. I have closed the bleeder screw on the other caliper. You have to do that. You're going to be spraying fluid all over the place and I've opened this one, installed the bag. I'm going to run one full reservoir of fluid through the left caliper and then we'll go ahead and do the back brake. And you can clearly see how easy this whole operation becomes. Here is the fluid that we pulled from the bike, okay, kept nice and neatly in this recovery bag. The fluid in the front is filled. There is going to be an upper and a lower level line. Now that we have brand new brake pads in here, we've changed the fluid, you're going to want to get it right to the upper line. I've done the same on the rear. You do not ever want to overfill your brake fluid, okay. Realistically, if you see your brake fluid level low or looking low, you need some kind of service. You probably need pads, you might have a leak. It's definitely something you want to address. We'll check the lever up front. Perfect. It's good and firm. Pedal in the back, same way. Perfect. Using the speed bleeders makes getting all the air out of the system very, very easy. This was a pretty simple service because we never really introduced any air to the system. We never opened the hydraulic system per se and filled it full of air. One of the last things that I'll do typically on one of my race bikes is once I'm totally done with a job and I've got the motorcycle where it's going to sit on a stand for a day or so or it's going to be in a trailer, you know, heading out of state to go race, to go ride, is I will take the brake lever and I will put a zip tie with the brake applied. And what that does is it kind of holds the hydraulic system open. If there's any air bubbles the other side of the master cylinder, as you're traveling or the bike is sitting, they'll kind of naturally work their way to the top, past the master cylinder, and the air will end up on the other side of the brake fluid and you'll have a perfect lever. That's it. This is a simple brake pad installation. Once again, this is for entertainment purposes only. In no way, shape, or form does this take place of a service manual. If you are not comfortable working on your own motorcycle, take it in and have a licensed technician work on it. Brakes are important. If they don't work right, you can get hurt. All right, that's it. Brake pads front and back. They are done. They are on. Bike loaded in trailer. Love the trailer restraints from Pitbull. I've got those two. They're great. It's the only way to haul a bike, isn't it? Right. What I need to tell you this is this now, okay? This thing is not going to stop as good as it did when you brought it here, okay? And that doesn't make sense because you have brand new brakes front and back, right? Right. I need you to break those pads in, okay? And on the racetrack, essentially, that's going to happen in the first couple of laps. Go out, give yourself extra stopping distance, okay? Use the brakes lightly. Don't put yourself in a hammer down, high pressure braking situation. How the brakes work? is once the friction material from the pad transfers to the rotor, you essentially think of it as brake pad on brake pad almost. You need some of that material from the pad onto the rotor from to work properly. Once that happens, you're going to feel them start to bite more and more, stop better and better, and it happens in a very narrow window of time. If you don't do that properly, you can overheat the brakes, damage the new pads, even damage your rotors, or if it won't stop and you put yourself in a high pressure situation, you fall down. That would suck. Okay. Those of you on the street, same thing. You do this service to your motorcycle, right? I want you to take it out there. I want you to ride it easy at first. Give yourself a lot of extra stopping distance. Break these things in. It happens in a narrow window of time, but if you don't do it, you're going to wreck everything you did and possibly damage more. It's really important you do that. 
That's it. We're done. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for the loaner. I'm Brian Van. Aubrey Stewart. Signing off.